it's been an eventful uh, couple of weeks, I suppose, in our industry uh, lately, because uh, normally things do tend to happen a bit of, at a bit of a snail's pace. But we had the uh, FECA issue a communication last week on the uh, rule requirements, rule amendment requirements uh, for two pots that's coming up soon. And as well as this week, there was, I think it was on Tuesday, we had the National Assembly approve the revenue bill that enables two pots. And then, lo and behold, some mention made of it in the budget speech by the Finance Minister uh, on Wednesday. But I'm not going to talk about all the details. I'm, uh, I fortunately have one of our industry experts joining me here today, Mr. Hugh Hacking, who's an executive at Momentum Corporate, um, and he's going to take us through uh, some of these issues. Hugh, delighted to have you on the channel. Thanks, Chris. It's a delight to be with you today. Well, perhaps let me first of all start off and just give a high level summary of the two part or the two component system right. uh, for retirement funds that will be implemented from 1 September this year. Yes. So essentially, currently, as you know, you contribute your retirement savings into the retirement fund and it accumulates in the fund. Um, and, you know, that typically is intended to accumulate until the date you retire and then you take out a retirement benefit. Although, Currently, what's possible is that if you change jobs or you get retrenched, you can take your benefit out early and you can, you know, you can take it out as cash and you can then use it. And people obviously often need to do this because mm -hmm. they need the money in order to survive. What the two component system does is it recognizes that sometimes people actually have problems before they change jobs mm -hmm. or get retrenched or before they retire where they actually need money and access to money. And this actually started off during COVID times yeah. when a lot of people were in distress. They were still employed, but they were working reduced hours, etc. And so there was a lot of discussion that started at that point in time as to how can members access a portion of their retirement savings. So the two component system is actually structured so that a retirement fund now has two pieces to it. Mm. It has the retirement component where money will accumulate up to retirement and a savings component where money will accumulate and can be withdrawn on an annual basis. And how it's structured is that one third of your contributions will go to the savings component and two thirds into the retirement component. The big issue here is that the retirement component money now going forward, you cannot access. So that means that people will not be able to make early withdrawals against that component of the savings. They have to wait for retirement or obviously you know, events like death, etc. Conversely, the savings component, you can withdraw once per year. You can make a withdrawal of that, of anything from a minimum of 2,000 Rand up to the full balance that's available within your savings there. The one important thing to also note is that any of your savings that have accumulated up until the end of August this year, one uh, at one tenth or 10% of those savings will immediately be transferred into the savings component where they can be withdrawn up to a maximum of 30,000 Rand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody with a very large balance, only 30,000 will be transferred and somebody with a, with a lower balance will have 10% of, of their assets transferred right. into the savings component and that can be withdrawn. So the big issue, of course, a lot of discussion has gone around, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? The pros and cons. Now, it's, a, it's not quite simple as to say it's good or it's bad because there's good pieces to this and there are, I suppose, less good pieces to it. On the good side is the fact that people will now have to save two-thirds of their retirement savings up until retirement, which is when they're actually intended to be used. And so that actually means that people are less likely to retire with very low balances. And that's a very good thing. The other good thing, of course, is that you know, people do end up in trouble and people do end up sometimes with reduced hours, et cetera, and they need access to some additional money. And so the savings component actually gives them that right. and they are able to access it. On the negative side, of course, is the fact that you may find people that just automatically are withdrawing that one third out on an annual basis and never really accumulating anything. And so effectively, they've reduced their retirement savings to two thirds of what they would have had. And, th and that is a criticism of the system, possibly a legitimate one. But I think on balance, you know, one has to look at the overall picture and what it does for the retirement system itself. More people that will have more balances at retirement, as well as people that can access money when they actually do need it. Um, so 
that's probably a rough overview. The rest, you know, we can dive into some of the more technical detail, sure. but that sort of gives an overview of where we are. That's really interesting, Mayu. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, the one concern that I think many people have is on this ability to, to access on a, on a yearly basis. And I've also heard many people, probably incorrectly, refer to the savings pot as an access pot, which I just think encourages the wrong sort of behavior. Uh, but having said that, I think also as an industry, there's, I think we need to do a lot of communication to ensure that people take money for the right reasons um, and that they don't overspend. Just your thoughts on that as well, please. Yes, I think, uh, Chris, I think let's first of all start with the terminology. I think we now have seen the terminology stabilized in the latest uh, circular from the FSCA. They right. now clearly speak about the two component system. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been talking about the two part system, and I think we'll probably continue that. But formally, it's the two component system. Right. And then the two pieces within that. Mm -hmm they refer to as the savings component and the retirement component. Got you. So I think it's important that we do then sort of manage that terminology so that we all have the same language. The savings component, yes, is exactly that. It's intended for people to save into that and only draw it when they actually require the funding. Look, I think practically many people struggle in this country. And so we will probably find that there will be people that will end up accessing that component annually, uh, even though ideally they should not access it and they should leave it there for when they really need it. But then again, I suppose, who's the judge of when somebody really needs it and when they don't? Right. So, you know, one does have to acknowledge that some people really need it every year. But, you know, I do think that ideally people should be encouraged to actually save for the longer term in the savings component, treat it as part of their retirement savings, make sure that they actually plan to have that money at retirement. But if there's an emergency, they actually then can draw on it. 100%. Yeah, and I think the encouraging part of this is the, the sort of guardrails that exist of the remaining two thirds, you know, in terms of accessibility to that or inaccessibility to that thing rather, which I think bodes well for the long term. So, Absolutely. Uh, so that's fantastic. What other things that were of interest mentioned in the budget uh, that you can recall? Yes, the budget speech was actually interesting for the fact that there wasn't a lot that most people, mm. man in the street, would say is interesting, right? I mean, our taxes weren't increased except for you know some additional um, taxes on you know sort of so-called sin taxes on alcohol and tobacco products, and and of course the introduction of the taxes on vaping products. Mm. Um, so that really was the only notable feature for most, you know, mostly the man in the street. I think what is notable, though, are some of the things that are less obvious that were said in the budget speech itself. One of those is uh, an increased interest by Treasury to, uh, to, to incentivize infrastructure investment. Right. And there was mention made of infrastructure bonds. These, these are, um, there's not a lot of detail around these at this stage, but this is really interesting because for the first time, what it will do is it will give long term investors in particular, such as retirement funds, access to purpose made bonds that are that are invested for specific infrastructure projects. Now, a lot of people have argued in the past that, you know, a normal bond that's issued by the government, you know, can be used for infra infrastructure. Yeah. But actually, the, the reality is that normal government bonds are multi-purpose uh, bonds they can finance any number of government activities so the, the 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 specific introduction of infrastructure bonds is interesting because they will have a a, a different profile different risk profile and you know to 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 other bonds and they will presumably have a different return profile as well they may have um, additional risk premiums built into their uh, yields which which might make them interesting for people wishing to make infrastructure investment i think another component of this that that is interesting of the of the budget speech that's interesting of course as well is the fiscal prudence that came through loud and strong we saw in the medium term budget we saw that and now we see that reiterated in this budget where there's really a cap as it were on government borrowing that that's been put in place there's a projection of you know, the, the, the government borrowing as a percentage of GDP actually beginning to, to uh, uh, decline after peaking in, in two years or so. And that's very good news because it shows that National Treasury is really 
exercising a level of prudence in terms of the financial and the fiscal management of, of, of the state for coffers. And so that was really encouraging to see. And that bodes really well for the financial system as a whole. I think what's probably at this stage, which we would have maybe liked to see more of mm. is around the growth story and what you know treasury and government as a consequence would be doing to invest to to encourage growth there were mentions made of a number of activities you know but um at, at this stage it's not clear that some of the impediments to growth you know resolving the electricity crisis the transnet issues and so on are they, they, they aren't clear enough management signals around those at this stage i would say but having said that you know i think it's encouraging to see that they were mentioned and that there definitely are moves by Treasury to stabilise those entities. Got you. Very interesting. Hugh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure having you on this on the on the on the channel, and uh, I think we're in for an interesting year. So uh, we may have to check in from time to time and just do a bit of an update, because I believe there are many components uh, to this. Let's call it this: the two pot animal coming down the track. Um, yes. ranging from systems capability, ranging from investments of it, ranging from preparedness by service providers and government, uh, both from a SARS, FEC8 perspective. So there's a lot of moving parts in this thing. And I think uh, it'll be interesting just to keep track and keep the audience updated as to what's happening as and when it does. Uh, so look forward to having some future engagements with you. Thank you, Chris. It's been a pleasure. Fantastic. Chat to you soon. Thank you.